invitation again, Ben. Um, so I'm Boo. Today I came here representing Snow Crash. Um, Snow Crash is this crazy thing that we experimented with at Flag CX for the past 10 years. So when the first VR days happened in 2014, we were already operating officially for about four years. So um, I came here today to give you my personal testimony uh, about the VR industry. I've been there since before the Oculus Rift DK1 in 2013, and we've done a couple of the launches of the main headsets like the HTC Vive and the first consumer virtual reality headset as well, the Samsung Gear VR. Um, and at Snow Crash, we tend to be a little bit secretive about what we do, but we've been also hosting official Unity events for more than seven years in places like Los Angeles, Sao Paulo, at MIT, Media Lab in Massachusetts, and in Stockholm as well, in partnership with VRSI. And, well, we worked with a few of those institutions and many others. Personally, in the last years, I've been dedicating my efforts into doing um, more idealistic projects around biotechnology, medicine, uh, artificial intelligence. And this is a personal project called The Blank Canvas. It is about biotechnology, and this project was made for my mom, who passed from an aggressive form of cancer in 2013. I'll get back to it later. Um, this is an official MIT Media Lab project. Um, on the right, you can see Richard Dawkins, uh, <coughs> the famous biologist. I'll get back to it later. Blank Canvas has been celebrated by venues like Motherboard and Vice. This is our friend Brian Merchan, who's going to be in a panel with us on Wednesday to talk about uh, cautionary tales and dystopic futures. And a lot of what I've done also revolves around science, neuroscience, and this is my school. <laughs> this is my head right there. We collaborated in self mode with medical institutions. Um, published many papers. I just heard Linda talking about clinical trials in psychiatry. We've done a couple of those since 2014 using hand tracking and biofeedback. So we were using things, um, a lot of sensors in, in the patients that I don't really want to dive into. And in the past years, I also have done some stuff with the United Nations around climate change. But those are some of the projects. Um, we always do that in a capacity that's very personal with our friends. This is one of the other dudes from Snow Crash. His name is Paulo Gibbs. And we've been developing a lot of those things in stealth mode. Um, and Snow Crash has been majoritarily about this, about questioning and not really making a lot of noise. This dude is Roberto Marchini, one of the founders of FLAG, and this is us fighting in 2014 with some DK2s and hand tracking and multiplayer at uh, FLAG CX end of the party. You may believe that the metaverse is a new thing, but Snow Crash actually created the term in 1992. Not our Snow Crash, but the original book called Snow Crash. Um, is it okay? Okay, so the original book was written in 1992, and it, it depicted a, a, a concept of metaverse that, that was a bit dystopic, super dystopic, by the way. And, well, Snow Crash is not only the name of the book in my unit, um, the metaverse is not really a new concept, but I wanted to show you um, this project called Converge. This is not Snow Crash, this is from a dude called Sean and Hayden Lee there both two dudes that basically, in the first generation of DK1s, they created the first social VR where people just connected. I remember 100 people in DK1 waivers. Um, Sean and Hayden have been before um, in many other companies. You might know Rec Room, that is the newest um, unicorn in the VR world. But I would risk to say that Converge was probably the most influential social VR project so far, yet it is largely unknown by the general public. Why? Because it doesn't focus on mass, on critical mass of users. But things like Tilt Brush were pitched inside Converge before everybody else knew what Tilt Brush was. It wasn't owned by Google back then, um, but anyway. 
So I'm showing a bit of this to show that a lot of people in the XR industry, especially the peeps that come here at VR Days, which is a very nice independent event that just connects this community very well. Uh, we come here to share a bit of those things and a lot of people don't focus so much in Critical Mass 17 right after we did uh, Vision Summit. I'm gonna come back to Vision Summit later, but I think my story with the VR industry in those 10 or so years goes from academic formation in Sao Paulo to the industry fostering years, which included a lot of launching the first VR headsets and making sure we had a thriving industry that could, you know, help people have a business. And then when VR was somewhat set, after the launch of the Gear VR especially, I decided to focus on more idealistic projects around climate change and biotechnology and AI. And I'm going to come back to AI as well. Now I live what I call the break or repentance, total dystopia. So I think in my career, I lived all this moment up to 2018 and complete naivety. And then I had this experience of, wait a minute, what the fuck is going on? So this is Vision Summit in 2017. Snow Crash was at that year presenting the cognitive VR experience, which was, uh, uh, I'm gonna show a little bit of it. Up with Watson and cognitive computing to solve real world problems. We wanted to mix those two technologies together and give presence to IBM's Watson. Hey Watson, what, what can I do for you? Tell me more about yourself. I am a question answering computer system capable of answering. Shut up Watson. Okay, I'll just shut up now. Like the whole role of AI is just to make our lives easier. To be able to feed data into Watson and use things like deep machine learning to but in that year, we were asked by Unity to present our vision along with Nicola Melo, the head of AI from Unity, at Vision Summit, the first event where you had Palmer Lucky and Oculus and HTC and everybody there kind of doing this big launch of VR as a medium. And, um, well, this is from 2017. Thank you. Oh guys, this is such a broad topic. Um, everything Nicholas presented was so awesome. And um, so I'm Boo, this is Adam. Uh, we want to try to tangibilize some of those concepts and how you guys can translate some of that into building projects with Unity for VR, but also mixing cognitive technologies and artificial intelligence. So at Snow Crash, we explore next generation experience design mixing always different technologies with partners from all over the world. And for the last seven years, we've been doing a lot of projects with institutions like Unity and MIT, Samsung, IBM, um, with all kinds of immersive applications uh, beyond games. And we always try to combine different technologies to try to stretch the limits of what is currently possible. Uh, we're here today to talk a little bit more about artificial intelligence and cognitive computing and how we think they mix in a, in a super awesome way with uh, immersive technologies. I was very enthusiastic back then. <laughs> um, so basically we suggested that cognitive applications could revolutionize medicine, scientific research, and all those things. Um, in that year we also um, took some work by artist Wallenberg, dystopic artist, into cautionary tales. And we projected this at Vision Summit, welcome to the cognitive augmented metaverse. And that was not a good statement. Um, anyway, Cognitive VR Experience got a bunch of technical achievement awards and innovation awards. It was supposed to be just an installation at MIT Media Lab, very low profile, but... Uh, anyway, what we imagined back then was AI in the context of XR as a service, as, as this AI was connected to a bunch of medical databases and Wikipedia, and you could talk to it, and it could give you so much value. But um, what happened in the following years is that actually we had much more complex, sophisticated algorithms of AI that are not offering users any value, but are basically gathering more knowledge on all of us and society as a whole and being controlled by very few people. So if we suggested very enthusiastically that cognitive could revolutionize all this, 
what the industry understood was basically, yeah, you know, violate and control everything. Uh, I want to go back to this piece by artist Wallenberg because it is just like Snow Crash, a cautionary tale. And when people ask me about the news of Facebook, I usually just go back to this. We wrote a public letter that's available on Unity's website and FlagCX page as well, stating that it was the best of times and it was the worst of times, the age of wisdom and the age of foolishness and the season of light. Uh, that's a tale by two cities by Charles Dickens. And well, I really encourage you to go read that. So on Wednesday, we're going to do a panel with Bianca Comparato. Um, and Brian Merchant from Vice. Bianca is an actress that does stuff like 3% on Netflix, sci-fi, cautionary tales. And uh, if you are into cautionary tales, probably you know Ghost in the Shell. That picture up there used to be the avatar of most people in the Meant to Be CM forums in 2013, when Palmer Lucky was you know, launching the first ideations for the Oculus. And we have so many of those things. And what happens, sadly, is that usually fashion sexes up those cautionary tales. And then people, instead of taking them as cautionary, they crave those things. And they become some kind of archetype trend for creative innovation goals. So people begin craving what was supposed to be a cautionary tale. Um, in many ways, the contributions that a generation of very good technologists AI engineers, microbiologists, psychologists, neurological uh, PhDs, and a lot of people that really were trying to do good things. Our work got misused by an industry that was very selfish. And this year, 2017, that was the first time I came here to VR Days to present the Cognitive VR experience and a bit of blank canvas. Um, and you can see a bit of yeah, I'll go back to the shirt I was wearing. It's sad, sad as fuck. <laughs> anyway, going back to the metaverse, um, people keep asking me about it. Let me be clear. I don't think Facebook is worse than you know the industry or you know big tech in general. But um, Google ex CEO Eric Schmidt has been doing some comments like you know we cannot trust those algorithms as they are, and they're trying to create like this gigantic thing. And well, I am a semioticist and university, I studied semiotics and multimedia communication. So I wanted to decompose a little bit of meta, not only from the Hebrew meaning dead, but also a good side of it. Uh, it can be good. In Portuguese and Spanish, it might mean a goal or, you know. But I would like to propose another term here. There is this concept that I came across that I really like. It's called metanoia. And this is the most interesting thing that I came to show you today. This is what my presentation is about, I'd say. Um, metanoia is, as you're reading, not only this, you can go back and read later, but it is about changing one statement. It is about retract retracting a statement just made, like the one Facebook just did, and then state it in a better way as such. Metanoia is similar to correction. It also goes along with my narrative of repentance of the contributions and the open source code that was misused by the industry, not by our choice, by the way. Well, Timmy is here, um, very dear colleague, a personal friend that I really learned to love. And he has a story with eye tracking um, many years ago. But I've also worked with eye tracking in the past. And it really scares me that the next generation of headsets are going to come with hardware that's capable of doing emotional analysis in a massive number of people. And this is really terrifying. Uh, an MIT study just came about saying that without the sensors, I know Linda mentioned a lot of sensors, but with the classic HTC Vive Pre, um, with 15 minutes of use, we can say with 99% accuracy who you are. And that's really concerning. Imagine what those AI algorithms can infer from people by doing that. Thinking about those things, last year I decided to fly here and be one of the first voices to raise those privacy concerns with Ben. We threw this panel about privacy and cautionary tales as well. Very similar to the one we're throwing on Wednesday. 
And well, I wanted to give a little bit on Snow Crash main mission. And back in 2015, me and Martini wrote uh, the manifesto of Snow Crash, what we wanted to do in the next five years and who we were. And we said we wanted to work with AI and companies like IBM and help shape the immersive industry. And we worked with everybody we wanted to work with, with HTC, with Oculus, with Facebook, with um, Magic Leap, with everybody basically we were doing projects. And um, this was part of our five-year roadmap. But I wanted to express a little bit of break with consensus reality here today. When I came here the first time to premiere Blank Canvas at VR Days, um, it was the same year my, <laughs> my grandpa passed. And the Blank Canvas was in many ways a project that I did because my mom passed from cancer. We were sharing the stage with Richard Dawkins and the biggest VR event of the decade, probably. Sorry, Ben. <laughs> and um, yeah, I was there sharing the stage with Richard Dawkins, the dude who wrote um, Selfish Gene and that I really looked up to, biologist, with this biotech project. And a synchronicity happened. My grandpa, who was a very spiritual dude, passed in the same day. And that made me think a lot. I almost didn't give my keynote at Vision Summit. I, yeah, it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. Um, and then I went back to why I was doing this. Well, this is my grandpa, 82 years old, doing some awesome VR experience. And you know, in the beginning of the VR industry, before all the hype, people would just have those things. And Palmer was really accessible, always. And um, it's a bit sad, everything that happened. But um, just going back to the beginning, to the origins of the VR industry, people just wanted to share joy and share the possibilities of the good we could do with this medium. And it was in many ways, including the VR Days community, about gathering with your friends, with good intentioned people, and in a very loving way, putting the best that we can give. And not about control. It wasn't about power. It wasn't about creating unicorns. It was about creating things that were good. And I constantly have to go back and go back and go back. I just wanted to say that a lot of the things that the industry is presenting now, it's really old tech. It might be new to the new generations, but just to give you an example, this is from 2013 and it's already markerless augmented reality, as the industry call it now, mixed reality. But it's just markerless augmented reality, six degrees of freedom, low latency. So you can imagine that, you know, Next generation MR headsets will begin to roll like this with probably Ray-Bans and things like that. And the reason why it takes so long to roll out is because sadly it's not only about those developments. There are algorithms being put in the back of it because a profit needs to be made and information will be mined and the AI behind it really scares me. I went back more and well, the sword that I was showing is very similar to the one from my university at the PUC São Paulo. Um, but anyway, just going back to the break and repentance mode here, I think those academic years from 7 to 11, they're really rich and probably my favorite, my favorite years in the industry were between 2013 and 15 when everything was just beginning and there was a lot of naivety and good-hearted people, intentions, and um, back then we did things like the launch of the Gear VR for Samsung. In the bottom there, there's a dude called Ronaldo Lemos, a, a lawyer from MIT Media Lab who was behind one of the pioneer legislations on the internet that talks about freedom. And we wanted him to be in the panel Wednesday, but he was in a meeting with President Macron and friends. And well, we believe there is a lot of good intention people out there trying to you know, steer this in a meaningful way. But as it stands today, I am a bit pessimistic on the outlook of this. This is Brandon Arib, co-founder of Oculus, friends with Palmer, and Facebook just killed Oculus. It's official, Oculus is no more. So I guess just like um, that, I came here as Snow Crash to turn a page. Oculus is dead. Snow Crash is probably dead.
I'm here declaring the end of a personal era and long live Snow Crush, I guess. But I had one last thing to say. Love beats data. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Just a quick question here before we move to the next one. Do you have a mic for me? Thank you. Otherwise, so you've worked in this field. You saw the promise. I mean, I'll tell you, it's 10 years for VR. It's 30 years for the people that started the internet. And they have the same feeling, right? What have we built? The dystopia is now, where everything is shared and everything seems commercial. What's the way out? Do you have any suggestions on what should happen? I've been really, thank you. I've been reading books and gardening and <laughs> enjoying flowers and there's absolutely nothing wrong with all of these things. But talks with my good friend Timmy in Gothebori, going to Botaniska, Botanical Garden, getting closer to family, and looking back at what we can do. Uh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing your personal journey here. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one, guys. All right.